Hey, it's Brian from Fort Knox Company. Um, in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how I ran some power that's already in the ceiling over to the recessed lights that I'm installing. So, um, there's already power up there, but it's obviously not going to the recessed lights that I haven't installed yet. I'm gonna show you what it takes to actually run that power over to one of the lights and then continue and start that circuit. So, watch, it's not too hard. I'll show you guys how I do it. And this is just one example if there's already power up there in the ceiling. So, let's do it. So this is the outlet that I'm going to be using for the fan and then the recess lights. I just did another video showing you how I installed this dimmer switch here. Um, if you want to check that out, it's also on my channel. But I show you guys how I actually installed that switch so that we can use it for the recess lights I'm going to be installing. I'll do a quick little diagram and show you guys how the power actually comes from the main uh, control panel and comes through the wall. It's one circuit for these two switches and how both powers actually run up into the ceiling and come up to the fan right there. So you can see I've already set my lights and I've ran wires in between them, but there's these two right here that I have not installed yet because both my power sources are currently up inside the fan. One of them is just capped off, it's the black wire. I'm gonna show you how I actually jump that black wire or the hot wire over to this recess light and why I chose that one and not that one. I'll give you a little example of what's up in there in the ceiling and this hole ended up having less obstructions trying to jump over. So I'll show you guys a little video of that and what it looks like as I run the wire and what I did to actually get that wire through all the insulation and into the power box that uh, the fan is currently mounted with. We have our power coming in from the street, comes into the house panel where you have all your breakers. We usually have a positive and a negative or our black and our white is what we commonly see in the wall. Off one of our breakers, which would be our circuit for all the ceiling lights, in this case, we have not only just a black, which is our positive or our hotline, but we also have a red, and they just designated a separate color so we don't get it confused because you're running multiple hot wires off of that single circuit. So in this case, they have a black and a red, which are gonna control lights in the ceiling. We still have that white or that neutral, which I've marked here as blue, and I got these little arrows just kind of showing you the flow of the energy of how it kind of flows through the circuit. We have a black and red and then the white that go through the house, through the walls, into our light switches on the wall. Inside the light switch uh, box, you'll see one of the black wires actually goes to one of the switches and then continues up. And then we have the other red wire going to the other switch and continues up. So after they leave the box, they go through the wall up into the ceiling. This is our ceiling here. And you'll see in the video that in the um, ceiling box where the fan is mounted, you'll see a black, a red, and the white coming through the ceiling. Black and red are the two hot lines, and that means I can control either one with either one of these switches. In this case, I have the fan wired up to the first switch on the right because our door is over here, so it's just the closest one to the door. So the first switch actually turns on and off the red wire. The second switch turns on and off the black wire. The black wire is currently just capped off in the ceiling, not being used for anything. So my plan is to come into the ceiling and pop some holes for my recessed lights. I'm then gonna run a new set of wires, black, white, and a ground, over, back through the box, over to one of the can lights. Inside this set of wires is gonna be also another white one. And then there's also a ground. There's always gonna be a ground. But once I jump the power over to that box, now I have a, a new set of black, white, and ground that is controlled by this black wire switch here. So it was originally just capped off in a dead end I'm just extending it over to the recess lights. Once I do that, and I pull my power through here, I'm 
then I can pretty much jump it over to each one. They call that like a daisy chain. And basically you're just linking all of your lights together at that point. And this power will just travel along each one and be dead end. The, the power still flows through each, each, each light and comes all the way back. And you'll see that everything on that white wire or the neutral is just joined together here because this all has the same direction of flow. It's all gonna be flowing back out through the panel. So hopefully that's not too confusing. I'll show you guys in the video what I did is I actually took that set of wires and luckily there was a hole to punch out here and I was able just to basically feed the wire through, tie it in, and that jumped over to my first recess light and that gave me power to my recess light system. Sometimes you actually have to drill a hole through or you might have to be a little creative on how you're gonna basically get that wire connected and then branched over to wherever you want. The reason that they do this with the black and the red is because a lot of lights and fans back in the day used to need two separate switches to control two different features. So maybe one would turn your fan on and the other one would turn the light on and you could do either or. Nowadays, a lot of the fans just need one power. You turn the fan on and then you can control the light or the fan speed and you can even dim the lights all from a switch, a remote switch. So in, in that case, that's what I have here. So I only need one power source to the fan. This black wire, which wasn't being used, is now gonna be used for the recessed lights that go throughout the whole entire room. Now that I have this all open, you can see what I was talking about in the diagram. I had the fan hooked up to this red wire as my power. The white or the neutral, the common wire amongst the, both of the single circuit. And the reason I used the red for the fan is because initially I had wired in the fan and I knew that it went to the first switch right there. I wanted to make sure that that's what I was using because the second one wasn't gonna be in any use at the time. So I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it that way since the first switch will still go to the fan and the fan has its own light attached to it with the remote. So what I'm gonna do is take this black one, which is the other hot wire, which was capped off and tucked up inside. This wire here, I'm gonna actually jump back through the ceiling and over to that one right there. Once I get this wire pulled through, that black hot wire right here will then power all the lights that are then connected to each other. And that will then be controlled by that second switch right there, a little dimmer. So let's see how easy this is gonna be. So I was very fortunate with this light junction box here. It actually looks like it's made to have the option to add or you could just use these when you're running the original wires. The uh, house was built with this power source coming through here, but it had these two little knockouts and I was able to actually knock this one out and I can go all the way through there, it's not obstructed, and I can actually reach the insulation right now. So that's gonna make it real easy for me to then pierce through the insulation and then at an angle, run over to the recessed light here. And I'll show you guys on the inside what it looks like. There's a lot of insulation in the way, but there's no other like big um, obstructions. So should make it pretty easy, a lot easier than some of the other ones I've done where I've actually had to create my own hole and I'm basically drilling through this with a large bit, trying to go through wood or trying to go through this plastic and then trying to feed my fishing tape through there to try to connect the power source. This made it real easy 
and hopefully we can get through that insulation with no problem. So as you can see here, I have my fishing tape and I was able to actually, at an angle, push through after a couple tries and actually feed the fishing tape what felt like maybe five or six feet with no resistance through the insulation. And then it feels like I'm actually hitting maybe a rafter, which going in this direction, that's only about three feet, three and a half feet away. So there should be about five feet of this fishing tape up in there. Now I just got to reach inside that recessed light hole and find it. So I have the fishing tape held right there with the little stick. Uh, I just kind of wedged it so that it wouldn't try to fall or pull out. But the uh, recessed light hole that I have cut here, like I said, there's about four or five feet of that fishing tape up in the hole or somewhere in this direction. So what I need to do is actually reach up inside there and see if I can find it. So let's take a look. And there it is. Coming through the insulation. You can see a little bit better there. This is all up inside the attic. So I was able to actually reach up in there and find this fishing tape and then pull it through. And what I'll do is I'll tape some of my wire to the end of this and then feed it back through the wall and it should come right out through that outlet. And then I'll be able to tie it into the black wire and that will make the new cable or the new wire that comes over here hot. That will then tie into these, which will run through all the lights that I already have pulled through the ceiling. There's eight of them. So now to kind of show you guys what I've done is I have the new power coming through here. You guys can see this is the one that I just ran over from there. It's coming through the hole that I punched out and then I took the black wire which I'm going to make hot. I ran it underneath the bracket. I attached it to the black wire that comes out originally with the house and that hot line is now tied up and then I pushed it up inside just to get it out of the way. But that now makes this black wire hot. So now when I have that coming out over here, it's gonna allow me to have a hot wire to run through the circuit of all the recessed lights. My additional white one now, my neutral, is just gonna tie in with the neutral here and then the neutral that's on the fan same goes with my ground wire. It's gonna tie in with all the grounds. Everything's gonna be ground together. This copper wire right here is gonna tie in. So now I'm gonna have three whites and uh, three grounds. And then this hot wire, which goes to the first switch, goes to the fan. And this new black one right here actually will go over to the recessed lights. Jumps through that hole over to there. So now I have the fan wired back in, the fan
fan has the black wire, which is gonna be used as the hot wire. And again, that's the red wire in this case, going to the first switch. My white wire being my neutral is tied in to both of the other neutrals. One coming from the house and then the other one actually is now neutral for my recessed light, which travels up over to the other recessed light hole over there. And I got these grounds all tied together here. So everything's grounded. And then again, my other hot wire, again, coming from the recessed light hole over to the other hotline from the house is tied in here. And then I tucked it up inside the ceiling just to get it out of the way because I still have this fan um, remote switch here that I have to fit in through there. And so I got obviously a lot of wires here that I need to organize and make sure that I can get this cap back over, but shouldn't be a problem because I kept everything short enough to be able to tuck it in and get it organized well, but not too complicated. It's always a, a hot and a neutral black and white or red and white. And that was pretty much it. Once I got all those uh, wires inside, the housing for the fan organized and I got it all mounted back up and cleaned up, that was pretty much it. I just had to connect the last few recessed lights that I hadn't installed yet and those were all daisy chained together and now that I have the power in the main recess light to kind of start it off, it was good to go. So uh, hopefully it's not too confusing. Um, you know, it seems like it might be a little bit of high speed knowledge with the whole electrical systems and stuff, but don't get intimidated. I hope I can explain it simple enough, but uh, once you start learning a little bit about it, it'll, it'll all start to kind of click. And then next time you want to replace a switch or an outlet, it, you'll just understand what the wires are. But always remember that black and that red are usually going to be your hot wires. Those are your positive leads. Those are the main ones that are going to be charging whatever fixture it is that you have. Your white wire, it's usually going to be just the common wire that everything feeds back through. You'll see those all tied up together sometimes inside of a light um, switch panel. Don't worry, it's just because everything's basically being fed back to that white wire so that it can exit the house or go back to the breaker. The main one is gonna be your black or your red. That's gonna be the one that's tied to your switch or tied to your uh, plug on the hot side or sometimes they'll even say black, but usually it's hot and they're referring to that's where the energy is starting, that's where it's coming from. That's pretty much all I got for you on this one. I have a couple other videos that I showed you where I actually cut the holes and I've actually mounted the lights um, I have some other videos where I showed you how I installed the switch, so go ahead and check those out if you haven't already. And um, stay tuned, I'm gonna show you guys all the different things that I'm doing. I'll be installing some other switches in some uh, areas that are elevated, so if you wanna like mount a TV and you wanna have everything plugged in and mounted up high where you don't have any wires showing, I'll show you guys how to do that too. It's not too complicated and there's a couple different ways to get it done. So keep your eyes out for that video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe, share it, spread the word, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one.